One, welcome to the mysterious domain movie palace. This time, uh, the piece I have for you is part of an anthology. When I lived in England, I used to go to lots of secondhand bookstores because they had so many books that I'd never seen before, and so many really cool anthologies of ghost stories and spooky stories. So I found this in one of these bookstores, and it's called Supernatural, and I paid three pounds for it, and it's in very bad shape. <laughs> but inside, these are stories by a man called um, Robert Muller, and they are, were really good stories, and it says, it says on the top, it was, um, oh, and it was uh, these stories. I don't know which came first, the book or the um, or the series, but it was um, a series on the BBC called Supernatural in the 1970s. So I always wished I could see that series because, you know, as a kid, I used to like the Twilight Zone and you know the Adams Family, and you know, I, I don't know what was wrong with me. I was into all that sort of stuff. Um, one day I was on YouTube and I saw an episode from this series. I had actually had seen one before. It was the Night of the Werewolves or it was the, uh, the Werewolf Feast, I think it was. Let me see, I'll look it up. Um, oh, Countess Ilona and the Werewolf Reunion. So I had found this on YouTube. And it was there and then it was gone. So I might be walking on a, on a branch here to put this up here. But, um, so I kind of would look at, once in a while, when I was in the mood, I would look for a, an episode from this thing. And um, I, guess a, I guess a couple years passed and I found uh, one, Night, a story called Mr. Nightingale, and this YouTube channel had once put up the entire series, but he had to take it down. But they let him keep this one up because it had Jeremy Brent in it, so he kept that one up. It has Leslie Ann Down. All of these stories are really good, and I really like the one I'm going to show you this time. Night of the Marionettes. A lot of you may know the story about Lord Byron and Percy Bysshe Shelley and Mary Shelley and jo Dr. John Polidori at the Villa Diodati in Switzerland in 1816 and how they sort of gave birth to the Gothic genre. Uh, Polidori writing the first vampire novel ever written and an, an interesting aside about him is he was actually the uncle of Dante Gabriel Rossetti, the famous Pre-Raphaelite painter, whose um, women sometimes look a little, you know, like our classic vampire <laughs> women. And uh, in fact, uh, Elizabeth Siddell, who had been his first model, when she died, they dug her up and they had stories about how her 
she was perfectly preserved and all her red hair was flowing around in the in the coffin and all this stuff so I guess uh, this theme uh, must run through his family as a um, Dante Gabriel Rossetti's mother was Apollodori, was uh, John Polidori's sister. But this little story I'm going to share with you is about Mary Shelley writing Frankenstein. And there is a, a scholar and an author played by Gordon Jackson, who is obsessed with Percy Bysshe Shelley and Mary Shelley and the whole Villa Diodati experience. So he's so obsessed with it that he takes his entire family to Switzerland to walk in the footsteps of especially Mary Shelley. He's extremely obsessed with Mary Shelley. In fact, his daughter is named Mary and she's played by Pauline Moran. The wife is played by Kathleen Byron. They, they've trekked all over Switzerland following the trail of Byron and Shelley and Mary Shelley. And they're finally, you know, they need a, to, to end their pilgrimage, I suppose you could say, and they end up at this inn. I love these stories about weird inns, you know, because you never know where you're going to end up when you go to an inn, especially up in the mountains, like up in the Alps, a remote inn, and they, um, they think it's just a, a cool place, and they stay, but it gets a little weird, you know, and they... The innkeeper is a very interesting character. He, you know, he he could steal the show, but all the actors are very strong. But his character is very odd. Played by Vladik Shabel. Um, very, very, very interesting performance. And um, I don't want to spoil it for you, but let's just say that things happen in this inn that are reminiscent, especially to our scholar, our hero here, of what may have inspired Mary Shelley to write Frankenstein. It's very clever. It's very creepy, but it's really fun. And I, I believe the story was written by Robert Muller and the director is Alan Cook. So that's all I'm going to tell you. It's uh, not as long as a full-length movie, so uh, hopefully you will enjoy this as your your holiday gift, right? <laughs> a, a, a spooky holiday gift about events that may have inspired Frankenstein. Woo! And you know, if you like these movies I'm sharing with you, please, uh, I love it when you comment because it lets me know, you know, there are people out there that enjoy these things and, you know, like and share and subscribe, you know, because, you know, I, um, yeah, I, I really hope that more people will find these and enjoy them. And, uh, yeah, take care. Have fun watching the movie. Bye-bye. My name is Howard Lawrence. I am an author. My biography of the poet Shelley may not be unfamiliar to you. No matter. There is, however, one book, the most startling I have ever written, which never has and never can be published. This book is a work of biography.
libelous, is it? A biography is certainly what I had intended to write when I sailed from England in the year 1882, accompanied by my wife and daughter. I endeavoured to follow in the footsteps of the poets Byron and Shelley in their tours abroad. We travelled to Geneva to remain for some weeks at the sinister Villa Diodati, where Byron had so assiduously entertained his younger colleague Shelley and Mary Godwin, who was later to become Shelley's wife. I see that name does create a certain echo in your minds, gentlemen. The Villa Diodati. A long study at the villa had exhausted me. And when my dear wife suggested that before continuing our journey to Italy, we should restore our spirits in a friendly Alpine inn, I agreed readily. Was it fate that made me choose the remote Gasthaus Ritterhof for our rest? Or had the sinister atmosphere of the Villa Diodati already clouded in my brain? The gas house, isolated from the scattered villages that nestled in an unchanging serenity of snow and sun, appeared to be an exceptionally tranquil establishment, where hosts of remarkable friendliness waited to attend to all our requirements. Our modest house is honored, sir. We are simple people. But your rooms will be warm and all we have will most certainly be placed at your disposal. Our name is uh, Hubert. We should like two rooms. One for my husband and myself and one for our daughter. Uh, naturally, young F, I will see to your luggage. Would you care for some refreshments after your journey? Some tea, perhaps. Some warm wine. It is cold now. Even during the day? Yes, tea, tea. How splendid. Yes, yes. <laughs> and a warm room. I cannot wait to change my clothes. I should like the warm wine, if it is red. Mary. <laughs> oh, very well. Tea and a little glue wine, thank you. No, sir, we thank you. Madame, Fräulein, Effa, Hans. Oh, they all priceless. Warm wine. Oh, we shall be so happy here. I know it. <laughs> I do hope you're right. This way. Oh, thank you. Prost. Uh, Prost, sir. Prost. Inglander, I am Otto. How do you do? Button my shoe. <laughs> Mixed pickles on board. <laughs> uh, do not address him, for heaven's sake, or we shall be forever buttonholed. <laughs> One has had experience of that type of person. <laughs> Exercising his linguistic talents, I dare say. Ahoy! Ahoy, yes. Oh, dear. I like the waiter, though. Oh, he is not a waiter, my dear. Not a waiter? At least I would say he's not always been a waiter. He had dyed hair, unless it's a wig. Ah, you observe, but it was not only that. <laughs> Never before have I seen a waiter wearing a wig. <laughs> it is not common in Bournemouth, no, nor in Oxford. Switzerland is full of surprises. <laughs> but have you really not noticed? What? There are no crucifixes. Not anywhere. How unusual. Oh, could they be Protestants? The innkeepers, I mean. Or even Israelites. <laughs> this way, please. Oh, <laughs> Swiss Israelites. Oh, what fun <laughs> for My kingdom for a horse. <laughs> this place would be so good for your father. Perfect for a few weeks of doing nothing except eating and sleeping. He's so intense these days. Oh, Mary, do shut the window, for goodness sake. The snow. How I love it. Snowflakes falling on my face. Nearly all your things need pressing, my dear. Oh, Mama, do stop fussing. Oh. Leave that alone, Mama. At long last, I am free of them. Percy, his lordship, Mary Shelley. Mary. 
particularly, Mary. Let them go on their tortuous journeys to Italy, to Greece. Let them go to hell for all I care. My dear, you do tend to talk to yourself these days. I have no wish to criticize. As for the Villa Diodati, it has. It, it must have surely yielded all its secrets. And yet. Supper is at seven, sir. Madame, if you wish it. Do tell us, are we the only guests? Please. Elspeth, I did ask you. In this hotel, uh, this guest house, my mother was wondering if we were the only people staying here. Uh. <laughs> no people is on board. No guests. Never. Now, many years ago, my kingdom for a horse. Not now. Uh, then how, if one may ask, how do they, the Huberts, well, manage? Manage. How do they live, the family? The marionette. But he's a dexterous fellow. Yes, you do most awfully well in London, you know, <laughs> as a butler. <laughs> Heavens, a Swiss butler in Bournemouth, imagine. Thank you. I have served soup for many years. But the way you do it, a veritable balancing trick. <laughs> and also, sir, madame, I was once active. In the circus world. Really? As How a jackal? A lion tamer. <laughs> a clown. Am I right? Bon appétit. The marionettes. I was telling you. They, who bet? They work the marionettes. What, they hold uh, puppet shows here? People come from far away, by horse and by sledge, to Hubert's, to this place. Oh, but I can see in your eyes, you know all about uh, the marionette. Hmm? I can only assure you, sir, we chanced in this inn by pure accident. Accident? Are you telling us that Nobody actually stays here. No visitors. Oh, not now. Not if they can help it. in this part of the world. That strange rumbling sound. Is it thunder? Yes. But where did it go immediately afterwards? Howard, you are supposed to rest. After their stay at the Villa Diodati. There is nothing precise, not even in my writings, my dear. You went boating on the lake to escape that ball of Polidori. No, no, no. You've got it quite wrong as usual. It was to escape from young Claire. Oh, you are a careless reader of my work. Good gracious. What is the matter? My kingdom for a war. My kingdom. Is it possible? Could they? Could 
both of them, even little Mary Shelley, have chance to stay like us at a place like this. I cannot sleep. There are so many mysterious sights and sounds at this little inn. If indeed it is an inn, Poor father, I can sense, is greatly disturbed. It is almost as if far from pursuing the ghosts of that dreadful Lord Byron and Mr. Shelley, they are now pursuing us. After their stay at the Villa Diodati. Before. To this house. This room. This very bad. Could it be that that I've come by sheer accident to the very source of my quest? Good morning, my dear. I trust you slept well. You have not slept at all. Admit it. Those sounds, Papa. The sounds. Yes. Like people dancing, was it not? Demented people dancing. Papa. You are supposed to be resting. Mama will be very cross indeed. Do you ever think about ghosts, Mary? Oh, indeed, Papa. Often. Last night, when I... When we could not sleep, I thought about them more than I wished. But now it's all over, Papa. Do come and fill your lungs. Snow on the mountains, pine trees, 
Oh, do for a moment forget those wretched poets and their nightmares. My chief concern has been limited to avoiding the enervating effects of the novels of the present day and to the exhibition of the amiableness of domestic affection. And this supposedly for my young girl of 18. But what part of Mary was Shelley trying to conceal, to, to censor? What strange secrets, experiences? You mean, what could have possessed her? Can you not either of you induce someone, anyone, to get me some tea? Mary, ring! One cannot ring here, my dear. And breakfast was served some time ago. So I see. I shall catch a chill, I know I shall. It was madness to have ventured up here at this time of the year, madness! Those dreadful sounds. Uh, come and have a cup of coffee, my dear. I haven't slept. Not at all. Not all night. No, oh, we are all a little exhausted. We shall have a long rest, I promise you. Quiet and tranquility. Spectres and supernatural enchantment. My imagination, unbidden, possessed, and guided me. Mary, I, I beg you. Not to talk like her. The other Mary. But what I have read, Papa, I have read. And what I have heard, I have heard. And now there's more to come, is there not, Papa? Much more. You will protect me. Your Mary. From the terrace to come, will you not, Papa? We must leave here today. I insist. No, Mama. We must stay. Tell her, Papa. Tell her we must stay. preparing for tonight's performance. I suppose you'll both want to go. I simply cannot abide Punch and Judy shows. Oh, but my dear, marionette performances can be works of art. Have you never heard of the Galanti shows? Plays performed by shadows. Shadows. We do not work with uh, shadows, sir. Madame? Ah. Then uh, you will attend tonight? If we may. Even the young lady? Why on earth should I not? Because it's not what you call Punch and Jude in our shadow play, no. All our, our dramas were created long ago. How fascinating. By members of my family now, deceased. You see, they... Uh, we were not always innkeepers. And your puppets, are they also made by members of your family? How clever. I think, madame, you may find our marionettes surprising. In what manner surprising? People seem to delight in being told the same rather coarse and violent stories over and over again. Like our old fairy tales. They're not really suited to the sensibilities of ladies. I'm sure we shall all greatly enjoy them, provided they're not too coarse. Oh, ma. Happily, we shall not understand a word of them. Uh, we shall look forward to whatever you have to offer, sir. I take it the old man is one of the puppeteers. Old man. Uh, the old man who lives upstairs. Your father, would he be, Her Hubert? I don't understand. On our first evening here, I encountered in a dark corridor upstairs an old man wearing a leather apron. There's no old man.
This way, sir.
Mary. Is she better? Does she need anything? Your mama has, I'm glad to say, consumed another quarter bottle of schnapps this afternoon. She will most certainly sleep tonight. More than anything, she dreads sleep. Poor mama. Have you seen anyone? Uh, no one, except the young servants. Oh, dearest Mary, I am thrilled beyond words. Uh, true, your poor mama's condition ought to give me cause for concern, and yet, and yet I feel uplifted. I do truly believe that I have found what nobody else has found. The source. The source, that yes. That it has. I'm quite certain I've been carried on for generations. Yes. I am so proud oh. of you, Mary. We have been granted the same, the same dreadful insight. I, I shall, of course, abandon all my other work now. Oh, Miss Shelley is. Tear it up, page by page. It would be absurd to continue. But Mama must never know. Of course not, Papa. It is our secret, Mary. Ours and ours alone. They were here, don't you see? Percy and the girl, Mary. They were here together. And together they witnessed it. The whole appalling, inspiring horror. Oh, Papa. Yes, I... I must attend to your poor mama. Mary, what are you writing? Oh, papa, my diary, of course. Danger, Mary, my dearest. Listen to it. Listen. Go to the room, Mary. Go and lock your door. In here, quickly. Yes. And is it in there? The workshop of filthy creation. Then let me look. No, no, you're <laughs> insane. If what we suspect is indeed true, they must kill us and resurrect us and make us perform as a hideous puppets. <laughs>
Can I be of service to you, Mr. Lauren? Yes. Even the witching hour had gone by before we retired to rest. My imagination, unbidden, possessed and guided me. I saw the pale student of unhallowed arts kneeling beside the thing he had put together. Please, do not take my curiosity amiss. Yes? You see, sir, I am a scholar. So you have said. Uh, then I wish to know, is it you? You and the old man, the one I saw among the graves just now, you Say it, sir. My father. Say it. For he's indeed my father. Ah. Then will you not tell me, did you or he, did you ever meet, make the acquaintance? Your hands are trembling, sir. <laughs> make the acquaintance of an English poet named Shelley and his wife. The poet Shelley and Mary Shelley, what of them? And did they not stay here on their journey to the Villa Diodati? Uh, the Villa Diodati? I wish to know, I must know, did they not stay here with you? In what year, sir? In the year 1816, Herr Hubert. Mr. Lawrence, we are writing the year 1882. And yet you now ask me about the events that occurred, or that you allege to have occurred, 66 years ago, before Sir either of us was born. Ah, but your father was alive, and your grandfather. Sir, you have already driven your poor wife to drink with your absurd inquiries. Your daughter, too, is laboring under an intolerable strain. Ah, that is, if I may say so, because she, we all have, witnessed sights and heard sounds here in your house of such unspeakable horror. No one has forced anyone to witness anything. And now kindly release my arm. I will be told the truth. Mr. Lawrence, did you have cause for complaint? This is a simple inn. This is no simple inn. And you, sir, are no innkeeper. And the reason you have no guests is because either, sir, you do not wish for them or... 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 because you do away with them. Then I would advise you, sir, to seek accommodation for yourself and your charming family elsewhere. Not until I've been told the truth. I became acquainted with the science of anatomy, but this was not sufficient. I must also observe the natural decay and corruption of the human body. <laughs> Can you deny that the old man manipulates those damned marionettes of, of flesh and blood? He does not manipulate those damned marionettes, Mr. Lawrence. He creates them. See for yourself. Wait! You do not wish, for the sake of your research, to see our laboratory? We must first have recourse to death. Oh my God. If I could bestow animation upon lifeless 
this matter. I might, in the process of time, renew life where death had apparently devoted the body to corruption. Darkness had no effect upon my fancy, and a churchyard was to me merely the receptacle of bodies deprived of life, which, from being the seat of beauty and strength, had become food for the world. After days and nights of incredible labor and fatigue, I succeeded in discovering the cause of generation and life, nay more. I became myself capable of bestowing animation upon lifeless matter. There never have been. There are only monsters. Monsters made of human flesh and imbued with damned life. No. Dolls murderers! <laughs> Frankenstein. <gasps> Frankenstein! that what Mary Shelley wrote during that rainy summer of 1816 was not inspired by a dream, but by the dreadful events that she, like my own family, had experienced at the Gasthaus Ritterhof before travelling on to Geneva. And there, in the haunted nights of Lord Byron's Villa Diodati, the young girl toiled, compounding her up appalling experiences into an alleged work of fiction. If one may ask, Professor Lawrence, your own family, how did they survive such a terrible ordeal? As patience, Sir Francis. As patience. Poor souls, one, one, one does one's best to, 
took care of them. But now, gentlemen, your verdict. Am I to be permitted to become one of you? Professor Lawrence, in our opinion, your tale is a pack of lies. Oh, the book Frankenstein is an invention, a novel, based on the nightmares of a wretched, over-imaginative young girl. <laughs> what my poor, mad, beloved daughter and I have seen, we have seen. What we have heard, we have heard. What we have dreamed, we have dreamed.